Okay, we'll get going. Okay, hi, and welcome to tonight's webinar that we're going to present on cash flow in a crisis. A lot of stuff out there at the moment to do with COVID um, and all those sorts of things affecting small business. So it's a real pleasure tonight to be able to maybe provide some small businesses with some tips uh, and a few things on what you can do um, with your cash flow for small business during these times. Tonight, I'm joined by my colleague, Jared Andrews, who sits on my right hand side there. Jared's uh, a bit of a specialist in cash flow, and tonight he's going to give us some of the tools and tips that a lot of businesses uh, are using at the moment to maximise their cash flow. So let's jump straight in. I can see that there's a few people coming online now, and we'll, we'll get straight into the presentation. Um, I'm going to share with you my screen, and we're going to get going. So just a little bit about us to get going. As you can see there, um, Troy March, and I'm one of the directors here and with, with Jared. Um, both, we're both chartered accountants, both been in small business and helping small businesses for a long time. Um, and tonight, well, you know, we love doing these webinars for small business. Um, it's our way of really getting out there and showing businesses some of the things that, that they should be doing. So just a little bit more on, on who we are. Um, and we've been doing this now since, um, you can see up there on the screen, since 1988. Uh, with when the practice first began. Uh, during that time, um, really what we do is a lot of stuff to do with accounting and tax. This is the stuff that we love to do. We love to get out there with businesses and, and share with them um, some of these things that are, that are happening, particularly at the moment with the way the environment is. You've got so much stimulus. You've got all these different things happening. Government's doing this, government doing that. Um, but some fundamentals of business still remain. And, uh, you know, there's a bit of a saying that when, uh, when the tide goes out, you soon find out who's been swimming naked. Well, tonight, um, I'd like to think that, um, that we're doing the right things, you're doing the right things, um, so that when that, you know, some of that difficult stuff happens, you know, you've got a good solid business. Um, look, we exist, as I said, one of the points up there, we want clients to be better off. Um, we're based in Gosford, Wyong in Sydney, um, and you know, we do everything here from accounting to financial planning to coaching and, and obviously these workshops as well. Okay, let's jump straight in. Um, so what brings us here was well, I mentioned, look, the coronavirus, you know, hopefully everybody out there is staying safe, um, hopefully not being impacted too much. Um, we've got things like JobKeeper, we've got cash flow boost, uh, a lot of talk out there in the market about when these are going to end. Um, we certainly think that uh, if it does end, some of the tough times are still yet to come, um, and that could be through September and through December. And depending on what sort of industry you're in, um, it could be quite difficult to, to maintain if some of those stimuluses are, are taken away. So tonight's an opportunity to look at some of these actions, and if Jared and I have done our job right tonight, um, you'll pick up some of these things and begin to get them into your business. So let's have a little bit of a look and, and jump straight in and, and cover up what we're going to do. Well, look, some recent research. Yeah, okay, so this is interesting. Um, in a recent, some recent surveys that we, that we looked at uh, with the ABS and, and Gartners, who are a big tech firm, 92% uh, of small to medium enterprises uh, owners frequently, uh, you know, stressed about cash flow. 80% um, say that it, it affects their home life. And in fact, 52% have taken wage cuts. And you may have experienced that yourself, maybe not. Um, but quite often small business owners are the first ones to say, well, you know, I'll, I'll take a pay cut. Um, I want my staff to be okay. So, uh, you know, these are the things. And most business owners, we talk about things like profit, um, but what most business owners really understand is cash. Um, where's the cash? What's the bank account look like? Um, yes, we may have made profit, but Troy, where's the money? Where's the cash? And Jared and I see that, you know, quite a bit. So what is cash flow? Well, it's very different to sales. Um, it's really, um, it's the, the end product of your working business. And ultimately we want your cash bank balance to go up, but it's really the interplay between a lot of different things. And we're gonna dive into that a little bit tonight because profitable businesses can and do go broke. And it might sound like a bit of a, um, um, a difficult thing to understand, but, but we'll cover off on that tonight, but it, 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 can, and it can and does happen. So, um, again, not a bit more research. 97% uh, of businesses are a small business in Australia, which is great. 45% of workers counts up 20% of GDP. So it could make sense to get this right, um, which is what we're going to look at. So what are we going to cover tonight? Well, here's a bit of an overview for you um, of where we're going to go and the journey that we'd like to take you on as we really dive into what makes your cash work for you. 
So the first thing I'm going to cover off with you is a bit of a coaching principle. We call it the Super 5 uh, and the Success Formula. And these are some principles, the bedrock, if you like, of what you need to do in your business to set up some of these habits. I'm going to show you something called the cash, the, the growth and, the, and cash flow cycle, growth equation. Uh, for many of you, you may not have seen this before. Um, it's a different way to look at your numbers. And um, it, it, once you begin to really pull apart what's happening inside your business, you'll begin to see um, all the different things that are happening that, that make up your profit and your cash. So we'll cover off on that. Um, break even analysis, Jared's gonna give us a bit of, hand, bit of a hand on that, along with some of those tools. Um, and we're also gonna look at, you know, just some basics, budgeting, strategies, um, and really to position your business, really position it so it can go forward, what's it going to do, what's it going to look like, and how is it going to survive some of these cash flow issues that we have got coming up. So that's a bit of an overview. Let's jump straight in and, and start with this Super 5 and then we can we can go from there. So the Super 5, what, what is the Super 5? Well look, it's um, I'll put a few of them up here. The first one is growth. So in the, in the survey that we conducted and in the small businesses that we've looked at, um, the businesses that are doing well, they have an eye on growth and they have a focus on growth. Now that may sound obvious for you, um, but certainly from Jared and I's perspective, uh, we see a lot of small businesses and sometimes small business owners say things like, oh, we don't wanna grow anymore, we're, 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 we're big enough. The problem with that is, is if you're not focused on growth and somebody else is in your, in your market, like a competitor, well then by definition, you're falling behind and you're going backwards. So we have to have a growth focus. Um, the natural state of a business is in fact to grow. So uh, we need to be doing that. And, and certainly if you're keeping your cash and you're building your business, then quite simply the retained earnings or the retained equity in your business is rising. So it should be growing. That's the first one. The second one is profit. Um, again, uh, profit versus turnover. If I ask a lot of small business owners, what's your turnover? Most, of, most small business owners can say, yeah, you know, it's $1,000 a week, it's $10,000 a month. But do you know your profit or your net profit? And my saying around this is, is that profit is sanity uh, and turnover is vanity. So we need to make sure that we have those things in place. We need to make sure we've got systems in there that are really telling us what that profit is. The next one here is cash flow. That's what we're gonna focus on tonight, but it absolutely it's a cornerstone of the Super 5. Um, you know, cash or profit without cash, not a good look. The fourth one is, is our asset value. You know, what are we doing to build up your business? What are you doing to grow its value? Um, if you get this right in your small business, um, then it should be the best asset you ever own. Um, outperforming shares, outperforming property, um, and with the right protection around it, leading into the fifth one, which is how do we protect that? How do we protect it and then you know, sell it? Um, unfortunately, 87% of small businesses don't sell, um, which is a real shame because you've built up this great asset in your working life, but you get to the end of your working life and you realize all you really had was a job. You didn't do enough to grow the value. Um, you weren't thinking about your succession plan, your success all, and all those sorts of things. So, so important that we're thinking along the way, but that's for another, another day. Tonight, we're just gonna focus in on cash flow. Cash flow, because I really think, and so does Jared, the next uh, you know, six months, uh, as JobKeeper starts to come off, um, as, as people still work out, well, do I wanna go to the movies? Do I wanna go and get that coffee? Um, do I wanna go on that overseas trip? As people begin to think about those things, maybe they'll be reticent to spend money in some areas, but they'll spend it in other. Um, some businesses that we have here at the moment are doing better than others, doing even better. Um, you know, but whether that stops and continues um, or continues, I should say, um, is, is to be seen. So let's have a look now at, at where we go to from here and, and really covering off um, this success formula. Look, you know, I run a lot of workshops with Jared, and if I could bottle up um, one particular saying for small businesses and, and, and sell it uh, or give it to them um, or, or make them do it, it would be this formula, and it, it's quite simple. You make you know, 100 to 1,000 decisions in your business every single day. Question is, are there right, the right decisions? The next step is, if you make those decisions, how are we following them up with actions? Because when you take a decision and you apply that with an action, you're going to get a result. But here's another one for you. If you make a great decision and it's a 10 out of 10 decision, uh, but you have a zero out of zero for action, well then, great decision, zero for action, 
no result whatsoever. This formula can be applied to anything. So think about what you're doing with your business, what decisions are you making, and really what actions do you need to take for that to turn up. It's a real coaching mindset that we have. Um, you know, and that other saying that we've got up there, your business is a reflection of you. Um, great saying. And, and when you think about it, um, and, it's, and it can be a bit of a bitter pill to swallow, um, it works like this. Um, everything that's working in your business uh, is because of you. Great, happy with that and all your team. But everything that's not working in your business is also because of you and all your team. So what are those things that aren't working? Um, and when you take on that level of ownership and that level of responsibility, you're now in a position to move forward. You're in a position to make change. And you know, as opposed to sitting here and saying, well, what are we doing today? The questions that I'd love to be, to be asking is, well, what are we implementing today? What are we, what are we changing? What are we growing in the business? And, uh, and cash flow is, is, is absolutely one of them. So with that, in, with that in mind, let me take you now, now that we've set the platform for where we're going tonight, let me take you through this wonderful thing called the growth equation. And again, at the moment, I'm still setting a bit of a platform for where we go and, and how Jared's gonna talk to this because the growth equation is really, um, let's grow the business by doing certain things that ultimately turn into cash. And if we get those habits feeding into those, well, then it turns into profit, which then we manage by virtue of cash flow. So let's have a bit of a look. Bear with me. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna change my screen here and hopefully everybody can, can see this screen. I'm gonna jump into it now. It's an Excel file. Okay, hopefully everybody can now see that and I should get a little note here from, from one of our participants that you can all see that now, that this Excel file. But look, let me take you through a different way to look at your numbers, okay? Now, you might see here um, on the screen where I'm hovering my mouse, um, sales. And every business has sales. Sales minus cost of goods sold, minus expenses, okay, gives us a wonderful thing up here called net profit. And most of the time in small business, what I find is, is that if I said to a business owner, let's do a budget, they might start with sales, and they might say, let's, let's, let's put sales up 10% next year and see what happens. A better way to do this is to really look at, well, what's driving the sales? What are the actions that we need to take in those other parts to, for sales to turn up and be what we want them to be? And it works like this. In your business, uh, you might have a certain amount of customers up here. In this particular case, we're saying this particular business had 500 customers. When we multiply those by a retention rate, in other words, um, how well we love them and how well we, we hold on to them, we find that this particular business was retaining about 400 customers every year. In other words, they were losing about 100, which means we've got to top them back up. When I look at this next box, which is leads and inquiries, which is really around how well do we market? You know, what are we doing to get new leads? Multiplied by a conversion rate or a sales rate, what we find is 500 times 20% gives us 100. So when I take my retained plus my new, I get 500. What do you notice about this at the moment? Well, at the start of the year, we had 500. And at the end of the year, still got 500. We have a flatlining business with no growth, can't quite work out why. But when you dive into some of these boxes here, we understand what's really going on. Just to continue it though, we take those customers, they buy five things from us every year, at an average rate of $443, gives us sales of about 1.1. It's not bad. Less cost of goods, less those expenses, of course, gives us this profit. So on the face of it, we do an analysis and we, and we, we go through and we look at those things and say, well, not too bad. Where are the areas for improvement? And why this is so important is because tonight, um, everybody who comes tonight, and by the way, congratulations for, for taking some time out um, and doing this webinar, which is, a, which is a great step. Everybody that comes to these webinars, Jared and I always invite you to a one-on-one -on -one complimentary discovery where we go through this model and this screen for your business. So we actually take out the data in your business to work out well, what's really happening here. But I'll, I'll come to that in a little, in a little while because every business is, is different. But let's, let's just say I go up into this retention rate and I was to make that 90%. In other words, we got a little bit better in that area there. Let's just say we get into new leads and inquiries, and let's just say that we put a new marketing plan in place or did something, and Jared's gonna tell us what we can do in a minute. And let's just say our new leads and inquiries jumped up to 550. Great, fantastic. 
Conversion rate, let's just say that we get a little bit better there. Let's make that 30% because now we're looking at some scripts uh, or whatever the case may be. You can see now that we've moved from 500 customers to 615. Fantastic, now we're starting to grow, we're starting to move in a positive direction. Well, if I look in here now at these items, what if I got an extra customer or an extra transaction? In other words, we cross sell or we add some value. And then this average sale value. Um, Gerald will talk to us in a minute about how we look at our pricing and, and how potentially we can put that up. Um, but really this is about selling your value. Um, you know, when was the last time you had a price increase? What's your competitors doing? All those sorts of things. But really, not so much price, but what's the value? But if I was to put this up, let's just say not even 10%, I'll make it 480. You can see suddenly that our numbers begin to explode. And that's really the conversation. But really, we're not just taking sales and saying, let's add it by 10%. I'll tell you why. If we had just taken that 1.1 and added 10%, see that number there, that 1.218, that would be your sales figure. So by starting with the wrong base, you could have dudded yourself out of $550,000 worth of budget. Now, you may not get there. You may not get to 1.7, but better to aim for something that's budgetable and achievable from an action point of view than something that you have no control of. You actually have no control over your sales figure. What you do have control over is anything in these blue boxes. You can control them. You can make a decision. You can make a decision to put your prices up. You can make a decision to go out and do marketing. You can make a decision to do something to hold on to your customers. You can't actually make a decision to make the sales go up. It doesn't work like that. But let's, it doesn't stop there. Cost of goods, let's just say that we got better at that. Expenses, you know, let's put $100,000 on, on, the, on the tab um, in terms of expenses because we might need to spend some money to make some money. Marketing, resourcing, etc. Great thing is, what does that do to my profit now? Well, if you can see at the top there now, my new profit is 462 versus 142. And I suppose that the more important thing is, just look at that valuation there now, 1.388 as opposed to 427. And if you underpin the valuation with things like, um, you know, um, all of your IP, databases, systems, processes, so that it's a turnkey business, well then, it, you know, there's a fair chance that it's truly worth that. That's the challenge. That's the thing that we need to get right. Um, and it begins to jump off of the page. So we're gonna come back to this in a minute and we're gonna look at the cash impact once we've gone through it. But what I might do now is I might jump back into my presentation and I'm gonna go back to where we were and I'm going to throw to Jared. And Jared's now gonna talk us through, um, now, that we've, now that we've actually said, okay, well, let's make some more profit, let's make sure that profit turns up as cash and it doesn't turn up into other things, which it, which it can and will do. As I said, Jared's got a lot of expertise in helping clients with their cash flow. So um, without further ado, I'm gonna throw over to Jared. Jared, mate, what do, you, what do you think of that? Yeah, thanks very much, Troy. And I hope all your businesses are going well and back to normal now. It's been a horrid time, three months for some people. So we're back on deck now. The government's done some assistance there with JobKeeper and Cashflow Boost and lots of other measures at state government level as well. So hopefully we're back on deck now and got through the worst of it, but uh, here's how to protect yourself. So I'm just gonna go over some of the other issues other than just forced government closure of your business that can affect our cash flow. We've just gone through a wonderful spreadsheet that Troy produced where we had a look at just increasing a little and tweaking a little bit here and there what it can do to profit, which is fine, but what's the cash flow effect of all that? So let me just spend some time on looking yeah. at issues around other elements of crisis that can affect you. So let's say your customers fall off, you can't pay your wages or the rent goes up, fewer inquiries or leads come through to your business, or it's more difficult to make a sale in this competitive environment. Customers return less often, they're not as repeat customers as they once were, and customers spend less each visit. So selling price competition might be increased competition as a result of businesses coming back on COVID. Uh, increasing cost of stock as well. So it's less stock out there at competitive prices, it's going to cost you more. So reduced wages as well, interest rate hikes, which might be on the cards in a couple of years time. So we've got to factor that into the equation. Fuel costs, all those sorts of things can affect our cash flow. Uh, it might be difficult to get asset finance in a period of time where you haven't been operational mm -hmm. and the finances 
might get a little bit nervous about lending to you where you're in a industry that could be forced as a second wave might come around. So that's also uh, difficult for most businesses because the idea is to try and get asset finance rather than trying to pay for an asset out of your own cash flow. Mate, with that one, that difficulty, how, what are you seeing out there at the moment in terms of asset finance? Yeah, look, it's been a little bit quiet because of the finance is a little bit nervous about lending, yeah. uh, but it's coming back on deck now. It's, yeah. it's quite competitive out there. Interest rates are low, so yeah. it is the time to get to the asset finance, yeah. but we've got to back that up with the capacity to repay, and that's what we're in yeah. that mode at the moment. So uh, that'll get better as yeah. time goes on, and that's what we should be looking at. So yeah. things to consider. Yeah. So just ask yourself and, and just step back from your business. And yeah. What is it like doing business with you? So it's about looking at the customer, asking them, um, what do they look at my business for? Why are they buying our products or using our services for? So you can look at the FAD formula, that was the old formula where they used to sell on features, advantages and benefits of their product and all services, and that's still true today. Uh, but it's more centered around now about asking the real questions to your customers and, and realizing some of those answers for you. So a little term there is YFM, what's in it for me? Mm. So the customer's saying, okay, uh, you've got that value. Well, what's that value worth to me? Please yeah. sell that to me. Yeah. So the three levels of customer service, they're basic, just your generic, uh, two desires. So it's asking those questions to the clients. And what are their true emotions and objectives? What do they want to get out of buying a product or service with you? And then making that the wow factor about the surprise element that your business that sets you apart. So that could also consider that to be a cash flow payoff for you. So it's about being proactive, have a nurturing program. You might stand by some scripts about your own business to say thank you or review your service standards, look at your scripts. Uh, what does your business want to stand by? And make that a service that is right throughout your business so that it gets standardized and get the right people in the right roles. Sales is so important right now. We can look at, which we will go over in the next few slides, about some tips and tools to reduce, but really the answer to your cash flow problems is making those sales. Sell, sell, sell. Yeah. So it's so important in this environment at the moment. So we've got to get those right people that can sell, can bring people into the door. So it's all about that nurturing program, about marketing, and then converting those and, and, marketing. Yeah, and Jared, I think as well, that one there that you've, you've brightly pointed on, the right people, I think at the moment with, with employment and unemployment the way it is, there's probably going to be some opportunities for some people who might be out of work who are going to be looking. So again, I think that's a big one. Yeah, there's some talent out there at the yeah. moment that have been unfortunately let go with the yeah. government and yet they've got so much to offer. So yeah, yeah. good opportunities for employers out there with the employment coming on. So we just went through some of the little yeah. tweaking that we went through in a previous spreadsheet about how powerful that is. So increasing the retention rate. So this is all about working or looking after your own customer base. So it's looking at guarantees. It's looking at lifetime value. You might offer some uh, wow service, but it's also maintaining your customer database as well. So under promise and over deliver. Uh, know your customer, ask the questions to them. What are they after? You get behind their true emotion and telephone handling, um, get it standardized. Um, they're your current customers. They ring up, they want a friendly personnel straight away that's going to direct them, solve their problem. Um, so reactive to old customers as well. You've got that customer database, get yeah. in contact with them. That's so, a big yeah, one. There you go. Yeah, reactivate old customers. That's a ripper. Yeah. An invitation yeah. only event. So make it special and make it customized to invite just around about 20 people to go to an event uh, mm -hmm. that could be quite special and unique to your industry. Yep. So also the leads, this is where the marketing comes in. It's so important. Uh, marketing is different to sales, so don't get the two intertwined yeah. there. They are completely different. So we're talking about marketing here, so it's one-to-all, -all, whereas sales is probably more one-to-one. -one. But so uh, increasing your leads, so yellow pages, that's an oldie. Uh, print advertising, direct mail, letterbox flyers, uh, fax marketing. Same things. Blogs, lifetime speech, uh, elevator speech, sorry, lifetime value, business cards, YFM, referrals, offers. And with referrals, don't be afraid to ask your current customers for a referral. Yeah. It, it's surprising how many go, oh, I didn't know you need yeah. extra customers and or clients. So, oh, yeah, fine, I've got some people that I might be able to. Don't be afraid to ask. Yeah. Uh, look at offers as well. So you might look at offering to current customers who might refer other to give them a little bit of a discount. Networking events, this is powerful. So it's all about frequency and getting out there and selling your message. 
which is consistent and position yourself as an expert in the Cape Back to your marketplace. You are an expert. You are the most valuable resource, you as a business owner. So get out there and sell. Yeah. And newsletters, that's important. It works well for us. We're keeping contact with our current, um, and we're also looking at increasing new leads with our newsletters. It's up to date, it's proactive, it's reactive as well. And you're talking about the current trends. So get out there with newsletters and make that consistent. Don't let that one go. By the way, guys, if, if we're, I'm going to jump to the next slide here now, but if you have any questions as well, just type them up. So I do have a, a little access panel here. I can I can answer some questions for you as we go along. Jared, this next one, this is about increasing conversion. Yeah, so this is where the salesman comes into it. So that's you, the business owner. You're the best salesman in it. So let's look at blogs and uh, you know write some you know tweets and all those sorts of things on the value of your business. Look at guarantees. Look at testimonials. Get your customers to ask something or to let you know on your website how wonderful your business was. Look at lifetime values or handle objections in the correct manner. Articulate your benefit. The real sales craze at the moment is value add. So you're selling your actual value is what you're doing. So for example, in a service industry, you might be given a piece of advice. Well, what's that value, that piece of advice? Have you saved the client money in doing so? Well, articulate that benefit. And that's where you're going to increase your cash flow. Look at the wow service. That's always important. You've got to be wow all the time. You've got to be ahead of that competition because they're coming to you for a reason. So if you wow now, keep it going. Yeah. Um, know the buying motive. This is all about asking the right questions to your clients and or customers. Get their opinion. Um, let them give you feedback uh, because that's when you can adjust and then provide that service to that client. Uh, some team commitment. We've got to get everyone on the same ball here. So the ones with the best team commitment end up succeeding quicker than their competitors. So we're, it's all about setting the scripts and the standards for your business and following through on that. Yeah. Know your customer, I've, I've said that before, you yeah. know, ask for that feedback and keep asking questions yourself because um, that's truly the only way you're going to get to know them. And close the deal, that's where the salesman comes into it. So you you're not only just selling, you're following up with our after service. So that's really going to increase your conversion and there's a few other factors as well that we can just go on and on and on. I, with, but. I love that last one, that close the deal. And I know something that Jared often says uh, when, he's, when he's coaching clients is, and you've said it before, mate, is that 100% of the sales that you don't ask for, you don't get. Yeah. So ask, you've got to ask for the order. So it's a, it's a good one. Average transaction value? Yeah, so this is really uh, both uh, the leads and also your current customers. Um, how do we go about increasing that average transaction value? Well, one is to increase prices. Um, that's an easy one. Yeah. Um, but and we'll go through a couple of slides later how effective that could be for your business even though you might say, oh, competitors aren't doing that, but look at the value, mm -hmm. sell that value. Package products together, so you can bundle your products together and look at making a value deal. Uh, Cross-sell, look at your other products that go with that current package yeah. you might be able to implement. Avoid discounting, we'll go over in the next slide or two the disadvantages and yeah, it's a big one. dangers of discounting, uh, because it can be profound. So sell your features and benefits, which is the fab. Uh, look at the wow service, that's a repetitive one. Educate customers on your value. That's all about you selling that value to that customer so that they understand and believe what you believe. So know your product the inside out, that's product knowledge. And yeah. you know your client, they're the two interrelated that can increase that average transaction value, Absolutely. which is also powerful as we saw in the previous slide. So yeah, decrease cost of sales. So keep up with your buying trends. Uh, you might be keep buying those products that just aren't moving. So always keep up to date with those buying trends and look to adapt. Yeah. Early payment discount. So major uh, your sale, which is great. Um, how can we get that money in sooner? So you know, perhaps there might be a 5% offer there for an early payment that can drastically increase that inflow of cash, which is ever so important. Volume discount. So we can see mm -hmm. increasing the volume of sales and how that can be discounted as well. Offer a loyalty discount for those long-term customers that have spent quite a lot of money with you. Reward them. Give them a loyalty discount. Yeah. Stock control is ever so important in decreasing the cost of sales because without a monitoring 
and measurement tools, we could be blowing out our costs and could be eating away at our cash flow. So there's some really powerful software packages out there and use that technology to assist you in that stock control. So all these things, Jared, I suppose, they're all underpinning that growth equation, aren't they? They're really underpinning all that stuff in those blue boxes. Yep, and working all hand in hand, each single one of those yeah. growth equation models can yeah. have a drastic, so it's a little bit of everything yeah, that you yeah. need to have a tweak at. Yeah. And minimize your freight costs, you gotta ask yourself, you know, is it necessary to get this on a freight on particular types of freight? And if it is, well, is there a cheaper alternatives out yeah. there? You'd be surprised to know. So the next slide that I'm going to show you, Jared's going to talk us through, is this thing called the dangers of discounting. Mike, you want to take us through this? This is a um, this is a cost, what they call a cost volume profit matrix. And what Jared's going to show you is the two different things that happen. One, if you drop your prices, how much more you need to sell just to break even, versus you put your prices up. How much little less do you need to sell uh, to to be the same? Um, you know, my little uh, that's my little saying there. You know, when you go to when you go to the service station and they say to you, "Do you want an extra Gatorade for a dollar?" Um, they're doing they're doing the 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 volume discount there, even though they're getting rid of less because they're they're trying to get more volume and get their rebates up. You probably already know that. But Jerry, look, mate, take us through this one. This one's the danger of discount. This is a bit of a a bit of information, fair bit of information. But maybe if we start with the twenty percent. Yeah, this is a really powerful table. Uh, so let's just say that your present margin or your profit margin is twenty percent. Yeah. So to get that same profit, and if we reduced our price of let's say 10% that we reduced our price by, we'd have to sell 100% more or double um, our products just to keep yes, our massive. sales. That's yes, so You can see as it extra plates out, yes, some of these are 600%. So. Yeah, it blows right out. So, so you, it's frightening. Yeah, so really what, what we're saying is if you have low margin, if you have a low gross profit margin in your business, um, alarm bells should be going off because the, the more you drop your price, the more you need to sell. And you can see here, it's logarithmic. In other words, it, it gets exponential. The higher your margin, not so much impact, but the re you need to resist the temptation to drop prices in the face of where we're going with all this cash flow stuff. The next slide's even better than, so this is if you drop your prices. Jared, tell us what happens if we put our prices up. Yeah, just sticking on the same 20% profit margin, you can see there, so if we just purely increase our price just by 2%, just that little tweak, uh, we've got 9% reduction in volume that we don't have to sell to keep our company. What's 10%? It's 33%. So yeah. we don't have to sell 33% of any products anymore to keep that same profit margin yeah. just by increasing our prices. So really, really important and, and, a, and a great thing maybe, Jerry, that, 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 that customers or, or some of these businesses could do is work out with their GP is on a product by product basis. Yep. Yeah. And plug those numbers into this label here and see where that matrix fits with you and then see how powerful just one or two percent either way yeah you want to decrease or increase can do for your business yeah excellent mate this side this 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 is to bring it all together mate tell us about this what this one does yeah so the cash flow cycle that's ever so important in your business uh so if we can start on that uh sale so on the top left hand side we're actually made a sale so fantastic great we've got that sale and as we saw profitable business can still go broke we're not so those debtors that we have sold, so they're sold on an invoice, we need to turn them into cash. So some methods there to uh, turn those into cash quicker or more efficiently is look at your terms. You might have 30, 60 day terms. Look at reducing those down a little bit as well. So send out your invoices immediately upon making that sale. Uh, use your software. There's some really powerful software out there, mm -hmm. even just off the shelf software, the, the cheaper versions such as Xero and Myop and QuickBooks. Um, they track your invoicing for you and you can go higher than that. We use our, a product in here um, called Appsium, yeah. which is really good systemized cash flow method where it, you're getting reminders sent out after three or four days. You're offering different payment terms, so it's easier to attract that cash. And it just really gets you to monitor that cash flow. And it takes away that getting on the phone, which is still effective getting on the phone on a constant basis and try and ask for that money where this is more systemized and you're stepping away from your business, getting on with making other sales. Yeah. So look at those. I do credit checks as well for the uh, people that are looking at getting finance um, terms for you and ask for a deposit. Don't be afraid to ask for a down payment on your goods and services and that you're looking at selling. It's worked well for many industries. Don't be afraid to ask for that. If they really want your product and your service, they will give you a deposit. So look at that. Uh, that could be quite 
And factoring also could be a last resort where you're actually selling your debtors out to a agency who pays you cash for it and then takes the responsibility of collecting that on your behalf. But there is a cost to that, so that's a last resort. So managing the payments, so we've got to look at our commitments. So we know straight away ATO, BAS, income tax takes a fair chunk of our cash flow out. Uh, it's the, the weekly um, in paying wages and it also is most bigger businesses monthly and or quarterly. Mm -hmm. So also got loans and lease commitments. Some loans have had deferred in this COVID environment out to September. That's coming off in September. So we've got those commitments back on deck. Uh, we've got to look at operating expenses such as our own drawings or our wages if we're corporatised and also wages to employees. So we've got to look at the productivity of those employees and are they actually adding value. So if we look at the bottom one there, we've got generate income cost of savings. So this is prices looking around our goods and services. Yeah. And so again, with the goods and services, which we've gone over there and reducing cost of goods sold, is there differing products that we can get? Um, so China's back on deck now, some overseas markets are now getting back on deck. So are there cheaper alternatives out there uh, to get our products on a more cost competitive basis? And then we get into the creditors, which is a byproduct of buying goods. Uh, and these credited days, you've got to look at as well. Um, so look at, people are looking at extending their debt days to you. So look at extending the credited days that are on offer to you. Look at those terms. Maybe you can go out a little bit more than 30 days as well. So and negotiate payment terms um, to get a discount, perhaps payment up front. Um, you might get a discount or a payment after 15 days might generate a 10% discount for you. So don't be afraid to ask. Mm. So that's that cash flow cycle, it's ever so, and it could, you could have some lead time in that, which is really affecting your business. So some of those tips might be able to increase that payment for you and get that cash inflow much sooner. Yep. All right, so uh, that, was, that was excellent. So Troy's now gonna take over and look at the area and the biggest problem out there is that you've got a profitable business, which is all sitting in debtors, but you've got no cash. Yeah. So that's our... Yeah, no, let's, yeah, so let's, let's put some, um, I suppose, everybody who's watching there, uh, let's put some meat on the bones now and really start to go, great, we've got this profitable business. Some of those things that Jared's just been through, which are great, they're going to help us, uh, help us make sure we get that cash. Um, let's look at an example, okay? So, for example, let's just say you buy stock, okay? Um, you, the creditor is paid in 45 days. Stock takes 60 days to sell. Um, so your cash cycle, if you like, is 60 plus 60 or less than 45. So it's 75 days. Um, you've got to fund that, okay? What that means is, is that you've got a gap between the time of your purchasing it, making the sale, you know, and all between there, you've got to pay rent, you've got to pay wages, you've got to pay bank fees, accountants, all those sorts of things that need to be paid in that time. You know it's profitable because that's why you're doing it, but there's no cash yet. And this is where working capital is so, so important. So all those things that Jared did, did, talked about, you're negotiating long-term, all that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna take you back into Excel now. I'm gonna just show you again, how that first example and how that now turns into cash and some of the problems that, that are associated with that. So let me just jump back into that model. Uh, I'm gonna share that with you. Uh, as you can see, this is where we were. We're in this model here around, uh, around profit. But let's jump into the cash impact, okay? This model is uh, similar to the other one. Uh, the blue areas are the areas that we can change, um, but it's very, very interesting when you put it together because what I'm gonna show you, um, I'm gonna give you a bad story, okay? I'm gonna show you what happens when you let your cash slip and how you get crunched um, effectively when you still have profitable business. And let me take you through what I mean. Okay, so in this, in this example, um, at the moment, I've got this business um, and it's got $100,000 worth of profit. Now, at the moment, it's generating $46,000 worth of marginal cash flow. But how's it doing that? Well, quite simply, it's, it's, doing, it's got 1.128 in sales, less cost of goods, which gives it gross profit of 450000 now you'll see in this here, I've got this, this little line item here. So in a perfect world, by the way, that, good, that gross profit just turns up. Beautiful, everyone's paid, we're doing COD. But it doesn't work like that because we've got this working capital that's going on in the background. Well, in this particular case, I've got debtors, people owe me, 93,000. I've got money tied up in stock, 55,000. And I've also got some accounts payable over here of 93,000. When I add them all up, that one plus that one less that one, I get this, working capital requirement that I need, this slush money, if you like, to have there to make it work. 
So when I, the 450 less that 55 gives me what we call marginal cash flow. In other words, the amount of cash that I've got to fund what, where I need to be. And what you'll find is that when I take that gross profit, which I haven't yet achieved, less my marginal cash flow and my expenses, I've got $46,000 worth of cash flow. Okay, not too bad. We can, we can live with that. And that's what I've got, we've got up over here at the moment. But I'm going to put some numbers here into my, to my debtor and my creditor days. Let's just say that we don't manage cash properly. Okay, so debtor days, debtor days for those who don't know, just to refresh, this is the approximate amount of time it takes for a debtor to pay you. So in this case, 30 days, not bad, you give 30 days term. But let's just say that begins to blow out to 60 days, okay? And I'll just hide this for a minute. 60 days, look what's happened to my accounts receivable. Suddenly, I've gone from having $93,000 owed to me to $185,000 worth owed to me because we're starting to have some slippage. This is happening. Believe you me, in the COVID world that we're living in at the moment, people are paying their debts later and later and later. It's happening. Um, no business will be immune. Every business will, be, will have that in some way, shape or file form. We've got this great thing called Cash Flow Boost and JobKeeper helping us, but people are holding onto their cash. So we need to be tracking these debtor days. Stock turn days, okay? Another one here. Let's just say that our stock now sits on the shelf for not 30 days, but our stock sits on the, <laughs> be careful what I said there, sits on the shelf for 60 days. Um, what would happen is that we'd blow out to 111,000 tied up in stock. But worse, let's just say for some reason, you, you like many business owners and, and some actually like to make sure that they pay their bills on time, which is a good thing and bad. Um, we get better. We get better at paying our bills a little bit faster. So our, our credit today is drops. What happens here is, is that we now have less in creditors. So what I wanna show you is here's my first line, which was that where it says old. If I keep this example the same, same sales, same cost of goods, same gross profit, but I change what's happening in my cash, com my, my cash components, my working capital that I now need to keep, it's like the oil in your engine that keeps the pistons running, it's risen from 55 to 213,000. Worse, when I deduct off of what my new marginal cash flow requirement is, I have, I have a shortfall. I now have net variable cash flow, which is the difference between our working capital and what's happening with cost of goods, of 112,000 around the wrong way. So if I go to the top, this is what I wanna show you. Now, if you remember right at the start of this workshop, I said to you, Profitable businesses can and do go broke. Well, here's an example, okay? Net profit, profitable business, receive some cash. Profit, 100,000, still making GP, but look at the cash. We're still making profit, but we've got no cash. And if you run aground and you don't have uh, overdraft or a debtor facility or sufficient working capital, or you can borrow from your, or whatever it is, um, can't pay rent, can't pay wages, staff leave, landlords change the locks, even though they're not doing that at the moment. But my point is, and certainly Jared's point is, is that when a lot of this stimulus ends, and it will end, um, you know, we're going to come out and it's going to be tough. It's going to be a steep learning curve. So what are we doing? Look, even if tonight none of these things are particularly resonating with you with things that you can do, if nothing else, if we're getting to the top of your mind, what are we doing about cash? What else can we do? Well, again, that's what we're here for. We'd, we'd love to help. So look, I, I think that's probably enough of the bad, the bad luck story um, or the bad news story in regards to that. I mean, we don't want to see that. So Jared's now going to take us through, okay, well, this is happening. Well, you know, what, what can we do about it? So Jared, what I might do, I might just jump back into my presentation. Um, I might go back to where we were and maybe, maybe you can, I'll just scroll through. We've done that now. Maybe you can take us through, okay, well, what can we do about it? Yeah, so we can see from your slide there previously, uh, Troy, that we can, we can have a proper business there, but what if we don't collect that cash? Yeah, so it blew out from 30 to 60 days, and also our stock was sitting on the shelf for another 30 days. You can see the impact that that did have. By the way, that'll be a very profitable business because mm -hmm. your sales are there and your stock is on hand, so that's going to create a, an outback of income. 
So it's suddenly very, very profitable. So it's looking great, yeah. but there's no cash because you can't collect it soon enough. So we're going to look at ways here, cash flow management, about collecting your debtors a lot sooner so that you don't end up into that negative territory. Yeah. So have a credit policy and stick to it. It's all about that collection system. So it's all about issuing the invoice immediately and so they can get that process underway. And stick to a policy in a system. It, it is very much systemized mm -hmm. and software can help you get through that because yeah, you don't want to be tied stuff. up and looking at that. So you can communicate and do all the start early and be persistent, but you don't want to be tied up in on the phone, which is still effective, but it, that's going to be a time waste for you. You've got better things to do to make more sales, etc. So there's technology there to help you. So uh, that technology will help you manage that pay, that trying to get those debtors in a lot sooner by asking early and sending out reminders straight after the invoice is issued after two or three days. And it's all about that reminder system getting there because if clients get in that reminder so often they're going to get really sick of being, oh, I just want to pay that, get rid of them. Yeah, so forward. it does work um, and just offer different ways of getting paid. So yeah. and don't just say, oh, we only accept credit card. Well, put your bank account details on there. You might get paid a lot sooner. You paid it, yeah. So the cash flow management, it's all about stock control systems. Again, use the technology that's out there. Some powerful tools out there that look at the stock control system when they let you know what's slow moving, what's moving well, um, how long it generally takes to order that stock in, and therefore more of a just-in-time system that used to be uh, prevalent in the Japanese mm. markets that's working still quite well to us today. So it's knowing the, the current buying trends as well. So you don't want to get stuck in buying old products that's just not trendy anymore if mm -hmm. you're in the product business um, and what's selling and what isn't. So and a stock good. control system will give you those answers and manage the obs obsolescence. So move the idle stock, you know, discount, just get, get rid of it. It's yeah. uh, tying up cash, so and get something for it. Uh, cash flow management, have a purchasing system. Again, use that technology that's out there in a wide variety of forms. Extend the credit terms where possible. Uh, communicate, that's big. You've just got to talk to your customers and talk to your suppliers. And negotiate, just ask for a better deal. You'll get that. Yep, yep. So the break-even analysis, this is where you really need to measure what you do have in your business. Accounting systems will give you this straight away and you've got to get those up to date. Yep. So if we look at what the break-even is, it's essentially knowing what your costs are and your profit margin. And then it tells you how much volume you've got to sell in dollar sales to get to that break even point. So we need to know that from a cash flow point of view as well, because otherwise we'll be going backwards. Yeah. So for example, gross profit margin is 60% and our overheads are 300,000 and our break even point is 500,000 in sales. So we can take that a little step further and go, well, what if we need to reduce debt because the debt's not hitting my P&L, but I know I'm committed to that. It's a balance sheet item. So you've got fifty thousand dollars in debt to reduce, then your break even point will increase to five hundred and eighty-three thousand. So you need that extra sales to cover all those yeah. commitments that aren't in your overheads. I guess why this is such a great slide as well, Jared, or a great concept is is that it's the bottom of the, you know, it's it's part of the reason why cash flow is so important. Um, but your break even, it's it's you need to know. You need to know what it is before you before you you know before you can begin to move forward in cash flow. Yeah, you sure can. You can break that down into days and weeks and months yeah. so that you can set targets to staff members to say, well, we need to sell yeah. X amount to actually just break even. So yeah. let's get on with that. Budgets and so uh, yeah, um, powerful tool to yeah. let you know where you can manage and forecast. So again, there's good technology out there with the latest accounting programs. That actually, use predictive behavior in the profit and loss and cash flow that let you know what's coming up and what mm. cash flow you're looking likely to have and it will give you working capital needs yeah just by calculating the profit and loss cash at bank the debtors stock and creditors just those players in that game will then give you predictive behavior and say well you're going to need two hundred thousand dollars in the next three months so mm. some powerful tools out there to assist you in doing that if you've got your accounting records up to date yeah. Uh, cash flow bank account, well, that's the yardstick, isn't it? Uh, that comes up on your dashboard straight away or you can get onto online banking and that's your bank account. But it doesn't represent what could be your cash flow because it could be sitting in debtors as yeah. well. That's going to turn into money into your bank account. But if you don't manage those debtors and you don't manage those stocks, it's not going to hit your bank account when it's needed. When it's needed, yep. 
Uh, so so Dr. Drollings, this is really good. This is what we've been working with uh, businesses um, yeah. of late that's uh, really driving the value. So it's understanding what the key economic drivers are to your business and giving some key um, performance indicators, which is the KPIs that everyone tends to use. And it's plugging those in. They could be, for example, gross profit ratio, uh, ratios, um, sales, stock turnover rates, data days. It can be all those drivers that you can plug in and then measure on a monthly or weekly basis. And I've got a couple of examples there for a cinema, for a motel, for a concrete supply. It might be cubic metres or number of rooms or number of tickets sold. But find what's the economic driver in your business and then measure that and put some KPIs in behind it so you can do some budgets. I think you hit the nail on the head, Jeff. That measure it. Make sure they measure it. You know, it's the old saying, what you don't measure, you can't manage. And what you can't manage, you can't improve on. So you need the systems in there to, to make sure that we're measuring it. So, mate, how do these guys position their business now, mate, just to go forward with this? Yeah, so it really needs possibly the business owner to really step back and say, have I got the right people on the bus here? Yeah. So I'm, I'm heading in the right direction. So this is where you really got to be objective and quite brutal mm -hmm. about your business um, because now we're concentrating on sales, all those sorts of things that turn into cash. So do we have those current people in the right roles? So just ask yourself that and really, are they quite productive? It's just a simple question. If not, they may be moved to another position within the company yeah. and replace those with people that will make that um, commitment to you and, and set you apart and get that cash flow going. So distinguish yourself from the competition, whether it's your product, your service, or your relationship that you do have with your customer base. Do your customers see you as a star? Are you really good at your business? Mm -hmm. Well, ask the question, let them know, because they can give you back some really positive feedback that you can implement into your business. Communicate with customers who are, are constant to you. So they're coming to you on a constant basis, communicate with them as to what additional benefits that you may be able to supply. Uh, consider customer satisfaction surveys. This is so effective. I love this one uh, because it really does give that customer the opportunity to give some feedback that could be really productive to your business where you're looking at those answers and going, gee, I didn't look at that. I'm going to do that now because that's what my customers are actually asking. Yep. And what is your unique selling proposition? So we're getting in behind it and saying, well, what's the value of my product and or service that I'm offering? So you've got to get behind it, believe it, and then your customer will believe it. Yeah. So over to you, Troy. Where to from here? Oh. Well, so there's a lot, there's a lot in there. So with, look, I've got this slide up here because you know where to from here. It's the ability to get things done because um, there's a lot to do in small business. I guess one of the things that we talk about a lot is being focused and staying focused. You know, I've said this before, but the fact that you're on this call tonight means that you're working on your business. So congratulations for that. Um, but you're going to be innovative in this space um, in the next little bit because coronavirus has made us all innovate. Um, so think outside the square, be innovative, um, put your budgets and plans in place. Um, you need to do that. You need to be measuring what it, what it is uh, that you're tracking out there so that you can make these changes. I won't go through them, through them all there, but it's really about being focused. Using technology, Jared mentioned that quite a bit. So I'm going to do a little piece here just on tech. Um, look, we went to a conference back in 2018 and it's still valuable today to reference that because we got quite a bit out of it actually. Uh, look, we love Xero, but we, we love all online accounting platforms. Anything that can give us real-time data, real-time data, reconciled, up-to-date, we can diagnose quickly and say, move that to there, change that bit, get that bit there, move that person into that new position, get rid of that sales staff, drop those expenses. These are the things that help us so quickly and so easily diagnose that we can move forward really, really quickly. Um, but this techno, this conference, um, what it did, it basically said that businesses that uh, used zero because it was a zero conference, in conjunction with other technology, actually grew their revenue five and a half percent faster than anybody else. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, so look at this slide up here, and I do love this slide. Um, I've, I've put zero in the middle um, as a as a hub for all of your transactions, and around the edges of this of this slide. Um, I'm showing you all those different apps and we call them apps, applications or tech pieces that Jared mentioned to help turbocharge the systems in your business. And for example, you can see there that, um, I don't know, if we look at the purple one there, the finance and legal, um, you can see just off to the right hand side, there's a little black one there called Debtor Daddy. Funny name, great product. Debtor Daddy looks after your debtors and helps you get your debtor days down by some of those things that Jared was mentioning automated reminders, payment terms, etc. 
you can get a 10% increase in your collection rate, which, well, perfect. I mean, you're not a bank. I don't think you're a bank. You're not in the business of lending money, so let's get the money in. Um, but all those other ones there, you know, there's some great ones to, to support your business, having a CRM. And I, I've never found in business that there's been one panacea for business. There's no such thing as a perfect business, but what it is, it's the, it's the intersection and, and combination of a lot of different things that give you that X factor, that give you that, 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 that little bit of an edge over your competition. Um, it can be hard to, to visibly see, um, but it's the interaction of all of that that makes it that makes it happen. So we love technology, and this next slide, um, I'll just bring it up very quickly. I just want to show you a, a little bit of a, uh, it's more of a backstory really, but um, small business owners, when they embrace technology and they embrace entrepreneurship, magic happens. On the left-hand side of this, um, these are the top uh, market listed by capitalization companies in the States. And what you might notice in there is there's a lot of tech companies, Amazon, Apple, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, um, and then you go through to some of the more traditional companies like JP Morgan, uh, Johnson & Johnson, and it also shows you the year that they were uh, that they were incorporated. What you might notice is in that year, there's a lot of relatively new companies. I mean, look at Facebook, um, incorporated in 2004, worth $500 billion. Um, Apple, worth a trillion dollars. I think it might be nearly worth $3 trillion today. I wish I had more shares in that. But the interesting thing is, if you look on the right-hand side, the Australian companies. And quite often what we find is that the Australian market follows in behind the US, um, not so much in the, in the past, but, but certainly in more recent as information becomes more readily available. What you'll see is most of our big companies are all been incorporated and around for a very, very long time. What you don't see there are tech companies. And why is that so important? Well, it's important to understand that A, it's not there, but B, when you look at somewhere like the US, where they're going. And what that means is, well, if we're gonna move in that space, and if that's where it's going, we need to be doing it here as well. Certainly at a, at a bigger company level, like a listed, but certainly at a small business level. Um, and the ability with, one of the great things about small business is you can move quick and you can begin to embrace some of those things. All great things that we can attack at that, at that complimentary one-on-one. -on -one. And just a bit of a listing here. I mean, I've, got, I've had a question come through on the panel um, from one of the attendees and it's, well, what are some of the apps that we could use? Well, here's a bit of a listing, but we can go through them all. You know, how to improve in your creditor days, debtors, um, how do you get better at invoicing, uh, managing your stock, keeping your bank accounts separate, all different manner of ways. And this is just the, the start of it, uh, of, of how we do that. Um, so where to from here? Look, you know, it's really about those decisions and, and actions coming up with those results. Um, you know, in terms of what we're doing. And we love this saying in, in small business and, and Jared and I use it quite a bit. But I suppose one thing that, that I will put up here is, is that um, when businesses come to workshops like this, if you just come to learning, you're going to see a bit of a spike in your learning, which is fantastic and really, really good that, that you're here and you're doing that. Um, what we find is if the, we continue on um, and keep learning and whether you come and join us in one of our coaching workshops or whether you come and get a bit more help in certain things, that you really become to, you know, um, improve in, in, in more and so in the long run. So we love to do that. We love to take businesses on that journey and keep those results going ahead. So if you remember, um, I mentioned that complimentary discovery session. So I'm just about to wrap up and it's, you know, we're, we're, I think we're right on time as we get down the hour. But one thing that's going to be coming to you in a couple of minutes, one of my colleagues is going to send you a feedback form, by the way. Please just take a minute to, to, to complete that feedback form. Give us some feedback. Tell us what you thought. We love that as part of what we do. We'll send that through to you as an email. When you do that, what will happen is, is that we'll also send you um, not just tonight's presentation, but a few other tools and tips that we've got that we haven't covered tonight that come to you electronically. Bit of a show bag, if you like, a bit of an electronic show bag that we'll send out once you complete that feedback form. And it definitely helps us um, as we go through and look at that complimentary discovery session. So that should be coming to you soon. One of my colleagues, Gil, is doing that for me now. But let me just tell you what we're gonna cover off in this discovery session. The first thing that we're gonna do is, we're gonna have a look at your business. And we're gonna have a look and do this thing called a business health check. And that's literally where Jared and I start to dive into some of those areas. And you know, the, it, I usually break a business up into 10 areas. Uh, cash flow, planning, sales, marketing, growth, delivery and services, legal compliance and HR. Which one of those wedges of the pie are you going well at? And which ones are you struggling with? Cash flow we're focused on tonight, but it's just one part. Are there anything else that you're struggling with? Um, 
you've got all your HR contracts in place. For example, that's going to be a big one, just to sidestep. I mean, um, people are putting off employees, they're putting new ones on. Now is the perfect time to get your employment affairs up to date if you haven't done that already, um, because it's, you know, we're going through um, a raft of legislative changes in terms of HR. So the health check will really help us do that. Uh, and that helps Jared and I diagnose really, really quickly where we need to zoom in on. Um, we bring out those, those Excel tools. We bring out that, that, that growth equation and we really look at, well, what are the things that are happening in your business now? How many customers do you have? Um, what's your average price? Um, how much are you selling? How much are you retaining? Um, and where we go to from there. The third one, where are you headed? Well, what would it be like if your prices went up by 10%? Let's play around with the model. Let's set some goals and budgets around those things and KPIs and say, well, if we did that, um, what could the future look like? Um, because ultimately, as I said, I keep coming back to it. There's no one magic bullet here. There isn't one thing that's going to change your business. What is going to happen is going to be the intersection of things. And you won't necessarily know which one did it. Um, but what I will say is when you start moving the pieces and you start changing and you generate activity, stuff begins to happen. Um, hopefully it's good stuff and you're making 10 out of 10 decisions. But again, 10 out of 10 decisions multiplied by 10 out of 10 action, you're going to get a 10 out of 10 result. And that's really what we're saying. So that'll, that'll help with that. And then finally, what's your potential? Um, where to from here? What else do you need to do to take your business forward? Um, what are your goals? I mean, at the end of the day, um, what I find with business owners is that they want to have stuff. Um, whether it's more time, uh, some want more money, some want more holidays, um, some want to be a passive investor. Everybody wants to have something and, and it might not be money. It might be just simply time or they want to retire or whatever that is. That's a goal. So let's reverse engineer that to work out, well, what do we need to do today? And certainly uh, at a more a tactical level, meaning the next six months, what do we need to do? Stay on track through September and December because it's, it, I think it's going to get tough. Um, at the moment, um, some simple statistics on insolvency. Insolvencies, for example, bankruptcies and corporate failures are at an all-time low. Now, you might think, wow, that's, that's incredible, but no, it's the very, 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 very calm before the storm. And there will be, and when talk, we work with a lot of insolvency advisors and um, JobKeeper's doing a great job, Cashflow Boost is doing a great job, um, but if we don't come out of it quick enough, and come out of it the right way, um, and that'll spill over. No one will be immune. So not to be overplayed or be alarmist, now's the time to really get ahead and, and, and get forward in what we've got to do. Next steps, really, please, that feedback form would be great for Jared and I so that we can see how we did. Um, how many webinars have we done now? About four, oh, four, four. four or five since COVID. So we, we're getting the hang of the technology. We've even got a fancy light over here tonight. So, um, so that's, that's definitely helped. We've taken some feedback. One person said that it was a bit dark in here, so hopefully you can see it's okay. Um, but look, yeah, take that feedback. We'd love to hear from that. We'll send you out what we need to in terms of that health check and then that complimentary one-on-one, -on -one. Um, whether that's live, um, you're here face-to-face, -face, we're still open. Uh, we're, we're doing all the, the proper social distancing here. Um, right at the end of my table there, we've got some sanitizer and all those sorts of things. Um, or again, we can do it electronically. No matter where you are, uh, we held one of these sessions for a business in Brisbane the other day. So again, wherever you are, we, we, can, we can begin to walk you down that, that process. So thank you. Um, look, feedback forms, we've got our diaries. Um, if, if on that feedback form there's some dates or times that suit you, let us know and we can get that booked in. Uh, my colleague Donna uh, and Gil and Sarah, uh, they support us here to help us make that happen. So they'll come back to you on those. Uh, any questions, just looking at my list here at the moment. I don't have any more questions. If there's anything late, it looks like I've got Len, Lisa, um, and, and a couple of others still on the line, but if there's anything there, guys, that you want to know, certainly drop us a line on that on that on that uh, feedback form. All right, thanks very much for everyone. Six thirty three, six thirty three. We've made it by three minutes. I hope, uh, I hope, Perfect. I hope it wasn't. I hope it, you got a bit out of that. Um, if Jared and I have done our job properly, then you, you'll take away one, at least one, maybe two or things out of that tonight and, and get them done. Yeah. All right. We'll, very good. We'll make okay. it. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you very much, everybody, and we'll, we'll jump up. Good luck. Stay COVID safe. Bye.